He said, no, you don't understand. He's the prime minister of Nigeria. He's here to get his haircut. He said, no, you don't understand. In my shop, everybody is equal. After serving in the Korean War, James Moore Sr. attended Barber College in his home state of North Carolina. Having grown up in the Jim Crow South, James Moore was adamant in 1960 that his barber shop in Arlington County would be a place where everyone felt equal. This thing was, I don't care who you are what, or where you're from, you know, if you treat me with respect, I'll treat you with respect. Having grown up in the store, James Moore Jr. took over the business after his father's retirement in 1998. The barbershop is located in the heart of the Halls Hill Highview Park community, one of Arlington's historically African-American neighborhoods. This area was owned by a plantation owner named Hall, and when they freed the slaves, he gave all his slaves properties. And that started Halls Hill, and so those communities, those families, took advantage of that and grew, and that you know started generational wealth for a lot of people. Black barbers in this area would go to D.C. because they would make more money cutting the white patron's hair. And what they insisted was their clippers had no black hair in them, no curly hair in them, so they wouldn't cut black people's hair anymore. And there were a lot of you know black people doing well in, in the Halls Hill community. They had government jobs, they had you know their own businesses, and they were doctors and lawyers and stuff. And so they started cutting those folks' hair. So Moore's Barbershop was one of the few businesses in Arlington County that served black and white clients. And that's right. So I was, I was happy that you asked. <laughs> the barbershop traditionally is a newspaper kind of place. You go there and figure out what's going on in the community from different people that come in. I have access to all types of people. We had a customer, and when he went to work, the man said to, the, to our customer, wow, Michael, that's a great haircut. Where'd you get that from? He said, oh, Mr. Moore, I've been going there for forever. And he told him the story about my dad, told him about me, and he said, wow, that's pretty cool. He's pretty much a, uh, a leader in this community. He said, yeah, he really is. He said, oh, I should write him a note. So one day I'm in the shop, and the envelope that comes here in the mail, and I look at it, and I'm like, from the White House? And I open up, and it's a letter from Barack Obama. Fly over the ocean. Joe, Jerome Green is a local cab driver. He owns his own cab. He goes and takes kids to different events, or he picks up you know, elderly seniors, people's groceries, or takes them to the store, or whatever, just a way of reaching back. Coach Thompson and I, our relationship blossomed, and one of the lessons that the coach taught me was I was talking about how the kids have a safe space. It's very important. He taught me that lesson. Our program for kids is, is barbershop books. You know, reading is important. While Jim's customers have taught him a lot, his father has been the biggest influence on his life. My dad, he would go to people who would come to him and patronize his business. When they got sick, he would go to the hospital, he would take me along, and he cut their hair, and he would never charge them. I said, Dad, you, you're giving away business. And he said, nope. You can't always take from people. You always got you got to give back too. So what I would do is once a month I go to the nursing homes here in Arlington to cut hair for free, and it would come back in so many different ways that that it would be more more than worth it. So you can't lose by doing that. The community has a long tradition of having to look after one another. Fire services in nearby communities wouldn't come to Halls Hill to put out fires. So in 1918 they created their own. The community bought a pumper truck and a, an ambulance, and they were um, staffed by the men. They volunteered, they learned you know, the basic skills. Back then it wasn't what we have now, it was just BLS, we call it, basic life support stuff. And so they could you know, save, literally, you know, their families, their community, their, their friends. Like Mr. Moore's barbershop, the fire station helped the community deal with the racism it was experiencing. There was a movie theater around the corner where uh, the uh, credit union is now that black people couldn't go and watch movies. And so what they would do at the firehouse is they put up a great big sheet and with the old projectors that they put it out there and the kids would come there and, and you know they have little treats for the kids or whatever. And, and so that was also a community spot in, uh, in the Hall Hill community. 
Like his father before him, James Jr. was very involved with Fire Station 8. I was a firefighter for 32 years in Arlington. And, uh, and I actually worked two full-time jobs. I worked here and I worked at the fire station. Jim retired from the Arlington County Fire Department in 2020 and was able to focus on the barbershop during the pandemic. Arlington County government came to me and said, Mr. Moore, we value what, we, what you do. We want to support you in, in many ways as we can. And so and I, I thought about that. I was like, wow, why would they do that for me? It's not just because, you know, we're a legacy built business. We've been here for a long time. It must have value to the community. And so that's really what the barbershop, you know, has today, just, just something intangible that's more than just a, a good haircut. Mr. Moore, all right, that's what My dad's conviction that every person, not just in the community, but every person in the world, has a, a responsibility to each other and to the future generations. Um, now that my dad has passed away, I understand it more because my dad is still living through me and then he'll be living through my kids and then, you know, hopefully forever in some kind of way through the people that he touched. I say that to say that we all have a responsibility to one another and it's just, you know, it's just not a, a hundred year thing. It's just not a, a lifetime thing. It's, it's bigger than that.